Hey, this is Piers from Modify, and we're going to be running through how I made this amazing sneaker advert using Modify's combination of AI creative tooling and powerful, non-destructive creative workflows. But before we jump in, here's a quick overview of the process. So in order to generate this final image, I actually put together some lo-fi input using a bunch of stock images that I collaged together, plus some basic typography. So here's what that looks like. You can see that if I fade between them, the composition I've arranged has been perfectly respected in the final result, which is what Modify's AI tooling is all about, putting you, the designer, in control of the process. And in fact, as well as having compositional control, I've also been able to have complete stylistic control over the final result by combining together several passes of Modify's image-guided generation AI process using our advanced layering, masking, and blending controls. So here's the process we're going to run through. First, we'll take a bunch of stock images from our Unsplash integration, remove the backgrounds from those using our AI background removal, and collage them together. And then we'll add some basic typography over the top. Then we'll take this low fidelity image and run it through a first image guided generation pass, which will bring everything together and add loads of interesting detail into the background. Then we'll take the output of that first image guided generation and use it as an input to a second one, this time using a more photorealistic model to upgrade our results to something more photoreal. Then we'll combine together our two image guided generations using Modify's masking functionality. This allows us to bring through the crisp, well-structured text that we have from the original image, and then combine that with the amazing photographic details that we have from the second generation, so that we're using the best parts of each image combined. And then finally, we'll add a third generation on top. Now this adds some really artistic flair and painterly details to the final result. And we'll again combine that with the previous results to add some more interesting detail while still keeping everything really clear, leaving us with this final amazing image. So that's the end-to-end -end process that we'll be running through. I've sped up some of this video to keep it interesting, but everything that you see here is real and the full end-to-end -end process takes no longer than 20 minutes. So let's get going. So here I am in Modify, and I'm going to be working on a portrait uh, orientation advert today. So I'm going to set the canvas to 1280 by 1920. And it's going to be a sneaker advert. So I'm going to find a stock image of a sneaker, drop that into my project, and just remove the background, ready to composite on top of the rest of the elements that I'll be adding. Now I'll just get this position somewhere in the bottom right hand corner because in the final design we're going to have a bunch of interesting objects flying out of the shoe. Cool. Now what I want to do is generate a final image that looks like a 3D render of a wave-like shape coming out of the shoe, carrying with it some objects and typography. So in order to define the shape of that wave, I'm going to add another stock image um, this one looks like it'll do nicely. And I'm going to place that uh, behind the sneaker and just get it positioned so that the wave shape is nicely coming out of the shoe. Cool, that's looking pretty good. Now, what we really want is to make the wave look like it's coming from right inside the shoe, like it started off inside and is erupting out. So I'm going to use the eraser tool here to uh, get rid of the sides of the wave, um, just keeping the parts that we want, the parts that are coming out of the, the sneaker. And then I'm also going to use the eraser tool again to basically just take these parts of the, the back of the sneaker image out so that the wave looks like it's coming from within. And like everything in Modify, the eraser tool is completely non-destructive. So it's not actually erasing the pixels here. Uh, we're just adding a mask, which removes the pixels that we don't want from the final result. Cool, that's looking good enough. It doesn't need to be perfect because the AI process that we're going to add on top just kind of needs a guideline to work with. Okay, now what we want is some sports equipment, something that conveys the feeling of summer. 
And we're going to have a bunch of these flying out of the sneaker and moving along the wave that we've just created. So I'm going to find a bunch of different sports balls and paste those into the composition and just get them positioned nicely. Um, and as you can see, I'm removing the background from each one as I add them so that they'll composite nicely on top of everything else. I'll just get these positioned roughly so that they're relative to the sizes of the balls in real life, um, but it doesn't need to be perfect. And I'll just speed this up a little. Okay, now these logos on the balls, I don't really want those to come through in the final image. So I'm going to just use the smart delete functionality in Modify to remove them. And all I need to do is just select the areas that I don't like um, and then click Smart Delete. And very quickly, those elements will just be removed from the image uh, so that we're just left with a clean texture. And I'll do the same for the football. So I'll just select the football layer and again, use the Lasso tool to outline this logo and remove it. And then finally on the volleyball, we will just zoom in a bit here so we can see what we're doing. And let's just remove this text. Cool. Now, part of what I want in the final image is a feeling of motion and excitement coming through in the background. So in order to give the AI a bit of a guide for that, I'm just going to add in a confetti texture behind everything else. Now, it won't really be confetti that comes through in the final image, but just by adding this here, we can give the AI some guidance that what we want is this feeling of movement and excitement and eruption. And now in the space that we've left in the middle, we're going to add some typography using the word summer. So I'll just add this in letter by letter so that I can get the characters positioned in an interesting layout. And as I'm dropping these in, I'm just hitting Command J on the keyboard in order to uh, duplicate the text layer each time. And then I'm just changing uh, the letter um, inside that layer. So I'll just get these positioned nicely cascading out of the shoe and make some final adjustments just to get that positioned really nicely. Cool. All right. Now in the final image, I want the text to look 3D. So I just need to hint to the AI again that that is what I want. And I can do that just by creating a copy of the text, offsetting it very slightly, and then just setting the color to something different from the foreground. So I'm going to use the solid color fill modifier here in order to set the color of all of those text elements at once. And I'll just bring that white foreground layer back up to the top. And there you can see we've got a very basic extruded text effect. Um, I'll actually make another copy of that just to make the effect a little bit smoother. Um, but again, it, it really doesn't need to be perfect. All we need is, is that hint or guideline. Okay, now finally, before I run this through image guided generation, I just need to get rid of some of the parts of the composition that I don't want to be included in the final generated image. So you can see in these areas in the top left where the wave is moving off the top and sides of the graphic. Um, we don't want that in the final uh, generated output. So I'll just draw a rectangular marquee and apply a mask in order to crop to just the areas that I'm interested in. All right, now we're ready to start doing some AI stuff. So I've added in an image guided generation layer here, and we're going to give it a very simple text prompt just to help to steer the output in the direction that we want. So I'll add a sneaker on ground, sports balls, clouds, um, swirling, excitement, and then we'll pick some colors to define a color palette. So I'll say cyan and yellow, and we want the overall mood to be bright. We're looking for that summer uh, feel. And now I'll use the uh, splash style, which is a very artistic, expressive 3D style. And I'm going to set the size to 1280 by 1280 and leave the mode on the default of contours because I'm only interested in the structure of my input. I don't want any of the actual colors coming through. Now, down here at the bottom, uh, usually by default, we have randomized seed enabled, which means that each time we click generate, we'll get a completely different result. And actually, if I were doing this for real from scratch, I would actually leave random seed on 
and click generate a couple of times in order to find a really great result. But I happen to know a seed that works from a previous run through of this tutorial. So I'm just going to drop that in here in order to save some time. Okay, now we can click generate. Cool, so now we've got these results back and you can see immediately the input that we put together, which was all super rough and lo-fi, has been flattened down into something really impressive. We've got a really nice harmonious color palette um, and everything hangs together really nicely. It's already actually starting to look like some concept art or an image that someone could have sat down and designed in a, a 3D package. Um, but one thing that's not come out quite well is that the text is a bit dark. So I'm going to use modifiers layering to just create a copy of the original text and move that up to the top. And now you can see we've got a nice light front to the text, which makes everything come through much clearer. And I'm just going to blur the edges of that very slightly because it's looking just a little bit too sharp in comparison to the background. All right, now things are looking good, but it's not looking very photographic. You can see that the texture on the shoe, for example, um, sort of looks like it's been painted. Maybe everything's a little bit too soft um, and some of those details aren't, aren't really particularly defined. So I'm going to add another pass with another image guided generation, um, this time to convert the result into a photorealistic 3D render. Um, and also the overall color tone of the image is a bit dark and, and muted. I, I really want a bright summer feel in the final image. So before we add the second image guided generation, I'm going to add a few modifiers here just to lighten the colors and make things pop a bit more. Cool. So. Now I'm going to add in a second image guided generation and I'm going to type a professional photograph into the prompt and just give it the hint of a sneaker um, as well. And then from the style list, I'm going to use the default photographic style called Vibrant, um, which is, is really great at, at generating realistic looking, uh, really impressive images. And then I'll set the size to 1536 just to make sure we've got lots of detail. And I'll use the control mode of image. And this basically means that all of the colors and elements from the original will come through and they'll be used to inspire the diffusion. All right, let's click generate. Cool, so you can see we've got some really interesting results back. The shoe is looking way more photographic and we've got some really nice depth of field and bokeh going on in the background. And these details in the top right really look like a photograph. You can see that the water effects here are actually looking really cool. Um, the only issue is that the text is not very clear. And that's because image mode doesn't do a great job of preserving structure. It's actually, it's great at generating interesting details and textures, but it's not so great at preserving things like text. So what we're going to do is use modifiers masking to just blend between this photographic pass and our previous uh, Swirl 3D pass so that we can bring through the best elements of both images. So I'm just going to use the eraser here, which is adding a mask to our photographic layer. And I'm just going to brush back in all of the parts that I want to show through from the original. And I actually really like these really interesting details that the photographic pass has added to the edges of the wave here. Um, I wasn't expecting those, but I actually think they look really cool. So I'm gonna leave those in. Now, I want the final image to be a little bit sharper. So I'm just going to add a sharpen modifier here and just dial that up a bit. And I'll maybe also just add a another vibrance modifier as well, and just dial that up just a little bit. And I'll just have a quick look here to see if there are any other elements that I want to bring through. Um, yep, yeah, I think the basketball and the volleyball could do with coming through just a bit more. So I'll just brush those in with the eraser.
All right, so this is already looking pretty great, but let's see how much further we can push it. So I'm going to add another pass with another image guided generation on top. I'll just type a sneaker advert into the prompt. And this time we're going to use the acrylic artistic style. Uh, let's change the size to 1536 again, and we'll use the image control mode. Nice. Now, when I click generate, you'll see that the results that come back are really interesting. We've got a really artistic interpretation of our image with a load of painterly details added in to each part of the composition. And that's actually looking really cool. Now, what I want to do is blend some of those details back on top of the original. And I'm going to use the overlay blend mode to do that. So let's just set that and let's dial the opacity down a bit just so that it's not quite so strong. And like we did before, we can now brush back over the shoe and perhaps some of the other objects as well, just to reduce the effect on those parts of the image where we don't want it quite so strong. And if we zoom in here to take a look at some of the details that have been added, you can see there's some really interesting stuff coming through. Um, I really like this edge detail on the shadow here. Um, and then some of the uh, painterly effects that have been added over the top of that really lovely bouquet in the background um, to the left and to the top right of the image. I think this is looking really great now. Uh, I really like the feeling of movement and excitement that I'm getting with this final composite. And I think it perfectly conveys that summer feeling that I was going for. So now all that's left for me to do is export my artwork and I'm going to send that over to the client for a first review.